And you know what's funny? I've literally seen videos in the past that are on overstimulation and modern technology that are completely overstimulating themselves. Like, they have all these fancy edits, all these animations going across screen, like, every which way, keeping the viewer, like, hooked because they know how shitty our attention spans are, but they're, they're contributing to the problem. How fucked is that? They're literally contributing to the problem by making a video that's overstimulating. But it's because they know you, the viewer, can't focus for more than two seconds at a time, so that's why they do it, but I'm not about to be adding a bunch of fancy edits to this video because, for one, I don't know how, and also it would defeat the purpose of the video. So if you can't focus for 10 minutes at a time of just me talking with no stimulating animations and all this fancy shit, then you need to watch this video. You're exactly the type of person that needs to sit there and watch a video of just someone who's genuinely trying to help you just speak to the camera without all these fancy edits. But I've probably lost the people that have shit attention spans by now because it's just been me talking so far and they probably already clicked away. But for the real ones that are left, let's get into the video. Modern technology has been made to be so stimulating that it gets us hooked. Whether it be porn, Netflix, video games, social media, they're all designed to just keep you hooked. They're all hyper-stimulating and actually contribute to our inability to focus. It's all this cheap dopamine that we're indulging in. And I'm not a scientist, so I'm just explaining it in bro terms, all right? Like your dopamine levels spike every time you watch porn, every time you scroll on social media, especially because every single second you're seeing a new post. And if you didn't know by now, yeah, that's really bad for you, okay? That's why you can't focus. That's why you also might feel down and like you don't enjoy real life anymore because you're overstimulated with all this cheap dopamine. Think about when you're scrolling on TikTok or Instagram, just how stimulating it is. You get sucked in because of it. You scroll from one post to the next, and it's like every second you see a new post, you see a new fucking ass pic on there. You go from ass to ass, or on TikTok, you go from shaking ass to shaking ass. Like, enough with the ass, man. That's why you're so addicted to these apps. They're just so stimulating for you. You're training your attention span to only be like one second long. You're only able to focus for one second at a time because you scroll from one post to the next every like, maybe not even a second, half a second. Think about how bad that is for you. And the crazy thing is it's normalized nowadays. It's normal to just go oh, grab your phone, pull up Instagram and start scrolling no matter where you are. Like nobody even questions you if you just pull out Instagram and you just wanna scroll it on Instagram for a couple minutes. Like that shouldn't be normal but it's normalized. I was actually talking to my grandfather the other day about this and he literally told me that the only entertainment he had growing up as a kid was him and his dad, they'd listen to the radio together. They'd listen to the radio. There was, they couldn't watch anything, right? They didn't have TV yet. There wasn't anything else that was able to provide them with stimulation. So they actually enjoyed going outside. They actually enjoyed talking to people. That's why if you ever see your grandparents, they can literally sit in a room with no stimulation, no phone, no TV, nothing, no music going on, and just sit there and be content. It's crazy because we can't do that. I can't even do that. I've made progress towards it. Like I've, I've been able to actually just sit still and be able to just sit outside without going on my phone. I can just sit outside and just enjoy the nature, enjoy the birds chirping. Like, I've made progress towards it, but we get bored so easily nowadays. And every time you get bored, what do you do? You just, oh, pull out your phone. It's like a, it's like a instinct, it's like a habit. You immediately, as soon as any spare moment of boredom, you pull out your phone right away. And I used to do the same thing, but I've kind of trained myself not to do that anymore because I know how bad it is for you. Like, can you even sit in a quiet room for just five minutes? Or will you just get bored right away and start going on your phone right away and, and turn on the TV or, or whatever. Can you even sit there for five minutes and just breathe and just think? What about outside? Can you even just go outside, sit, sit next to a tree or just go on a walk outside without pulling your phone out to take a freaking picture of nature because you need to post it on your Instagram story? We just need to undo all this damage that modern technology is causing us, okay? The damage is insane when you think about it. The damage that modern technology has caused on us, caused on our ability to focus, caused on our attention span, caused on our mental health. Like, it's crazy. That's why I'm trying to make these videos to help you. Because I was there, like, overstimulation completely ruined my life. Like, let me explain to you some of the the things that happened. I remember I got my first iPhone. I think I was I was a freshman in high school, so I was 13 years old. I got my first iPhone. 
and immediately you get hooked, right? Like remember your first iPhone? You, If you're younger than me watching this, you probably got your first iPhone younger than the age of 13. Maybe not, but that's crazy to get it at such a young age. And I immediately was hooked and I know Snapchat was around then, Instagram was already around. So immediately had those two apps and was constantly being overstimulated as a 13 year old kid, just from always scrolling on Instagram. And I remember just getting so sucked into Instagram all the time. Like, do you ever, ha do you ever have those thoughts while you're scrolling on Instagram of, oh, maybe I should get off this app, maybe I should close it, but you literally can't. Like, you're tell your brain is telling you maybe you should get off the app, but you, you can't, you're so sucked in, you just keep scrolling from one post to the next. Like, that would happen to me. I don't know if that happens to you, but that's the crazy thing about these apps is they literally get you hooked. And then, you know, throughout high school, any spare moment I had in school, I'd be checking my phone. And then when I'd get home from school, it was just immediately, I wouldn't do much homework, right? Like, <laughs> so I'd immediately turn on the TV, play video games, keep scrolling social media, obviously watch porn too. I was literally jerking off every single night. So I was getting an insane amount of stimulation every day, but you probably don't even think that's insane. You probably think that's normal, right? It is normalized, but I'm telling you right now, when you step away from it and start to live a more less stimulated life, you just, you see the benefits of it and you realize how not normal it is to just constantly be stimulating yourself. But anyway, I also, you know, after high school, when I'm in college, it just got worse because now I'm doing drugs, all right? I'm smoking weed. I'm taking Adderall every day. I'm watching more porn. I'm, I'm playing more video games. I'm watching more TV. I'm scrolling social media more seeing more ass pics on social media, seeing guys who are far more jacked than me and, and thinking, oh, I'm never gonna look like that. My life sucks, getting depressed because of all this stimulation. A typical day for me back when I was in college or like even outside of college when I started working full time was I'd wake up immediately, what do I do? Grab my phone, like my alarm would go off and I'd be so groggy, like probably had shitty sleep but I'd get, get on my phone and go to Instagram and Snapchat right away. Instagram and Snapchat right away. That is the worst thing you can do, is stay in bed and scroll on these apps. Like you're immediately right in the morning frying your dopamine receptors with just this overstimulating content. But that's what I'd do and I'd probably sit there for like an hour, but then I'd get up, smoke weed. Now I'm even more stimulated. It's not like the technology stimulation, but it's, you know, you're high, so you're stimulated. But, and then it would be, oh, immediately start playing video games, start playing Call of Duty, start playing 2K. I played 2K because I, I liked basketball. I still like basketball, but I was a big 2K guy. So I'd be playing 2K, playing Call of Duty. Uh, what else? That was probably it at that time. And then I'm watching Netflix. I'm watching all this bullshit Netflix series. Just bouncing from video games to Netflix to porn. That's literally what I did. I'd smoke weed, then I'd bounce from video games to Netflix to porn all day long. Like I had nothing going for me. It was just overstimulation, hyperstimulation, stimulation, stimulation, stimulation all day, frying my dopamine receptors, frying my brain. That's why I could never get anything done. Think about it in high school. If you're in high school, do you, are you able to even focus in class? Or is your teacher just boring you to death and you're just constantly thinking about other thoughts? Like I was there, trust me, I hated school. I would just be in school thinking about when I can play video games, oh, when I can go jerk off, when I can go watch TV. I didn't give a shit when I could go play basketball. I was just, I was just focused on other shit. I wasn't able to just actually sit there and focus because there was not enough stimulation. I needed stimulation. That's why I couldn't read either. They put me in a class called power reading for kids who couldn't comprehend what they were reading. Like I'd literally read a paragraph and I don't, I don't know, we had we got like tested on this, but I would read a paragraph and I would only be able to comprehend like a sentence of it. Maybe not even. Sometimes I wouldn't even be able to comprehend any of it because the whole time I'm reading it, like I'm, I'm looking at the words and I'm not actually registering what the words are. I couldn't read. My brain was so fried. I'd be thinking about other shit. I'd be thinking about stimulating content. I'd be thinking about anything that was going to give me more stimulation, more stimulation because real life sucked. The stimulation world was where it was at and that's such a problem okay that's such a problem if you don't understand this by now then i don't know what to tell you you might be a lost cause you're probably not even still watching this video you definitely already clicked off this video if you don't understand this concept because you're just looking at me like i'm a fucking asshole which i am but <laughs> anyway where was i i was just freaking ranting i don't even remember what i was talking about just kidding so messed up i guarantee half the kid more than half the kids in high school nowadays are probably 
the same way that I was. They can't read. They can't comprehend anything they're reading because they're just thinking about the next time they can go watch porn, the next time they can go play video games, the next time they can just watch Netflix and just escape the real world because the real world sucks when you're exposed to all this stimulation. I'll even, I'll even admit, the real world sucks when you're exposed to just constant stimulation. You'd 100% rather just sit around and do nothing and, and experience all this stimulating content because of, of how much it spikes your dopamine levels. Like, you're having way more fun doing that. But that's the problem because, you know, once you get away from all that stimulating content, real world, the real world becomes exciting and fun again. And you actually enjoy life again. And that is why I preach about dopamine detoxing on my channel because that is literally what saved me from the overstimulation just trap. And it saved me from just having such shitty mental health and just have no drive, no passion in life. It saved me from just constantly distracting myself with overstimulating content because the whole point of a dopamine detox is to remove that from your life. Remove the cheap, easy dopamines from your life that hyperstimulate you and start to replace those habits with the delayed gratification, good, good dopamine habits. For I'm like like I said, I'm not a science nerd, so I'm just explaining this for you to understand in an easier way. But that's the basis of a dopamine detox. And instead of doing just a 24 hour, oh, I'm gonna just cut off all dopamine for, for one day and do a challenge, you gotta actually transform your life into a dopamine detox. That's what I did a few years ago to, to completely transform my life was, <clears throat> excuse me, was to cut off the amount that I use social media. I stopped playing video games. I stopped watching TV as much and I stopped going on my phone as much because when you're not using social media, why are you even on your phone? There's no point, right? And I actually deleted social media altogether. I'll make another video about that. But when you stop and I quit porn, okay, I completely quit porn because that is probably the worst one for you. It's never too late. Like, like I just told you, I was very overstimulated to the point where I basically ruined my life. I had nothing going for me. I was depressed. I was lonely. My mental health was awful and it was in large part because I was overstimulating myself every single minute. So it's never too late. I was where you are right now. So don't worry, you can turn this around. Because the other thing that I did, I got on a dopamine detox, like a lifestyle one. I didn't just do it for a 24 hour challenge. I literally turned it into my lifestyle. The other way I was able to just like turn my life around and escape this overstimulation, life ruining modern technology bullshit was I started to meditate because if you think about it, it's actually gonna be able to help you reverse the effects you've done on your brain because you've, right, remember you've trained your brain to only be able to focus for one second at a time by scrolling all the time. Like you're just a zombie, just uh... But meditation will start to train your brain to start to be able to focus for longer than a second. And all it takes is five minutes. You just set the timer for five minutes and just sit there and inhale and then exhale, and all you're doing is you're just focusing on your breath. The whole point is yes, thoughts are gonna be coming in, because remember you're a fucking dumbass, so of course thoughts are gonna come in. But when you recognize that your thoughts have wandered and that you're deep in thought on, on that ass pic you just saw on Instagram or on that math test that you didn't study for, then that's when you wanna bring your attention back to your breath. So you're training your brain to just go back to one thing, which is your breath, and you just focus and just sit there and breathe for five minutes. That's how you can start to reverse the effects you've done on your brain. And meditation has done wonders for my focus, my attention span, my mental health. Get on a dopamine detox and start meditating and start exercising. That's how you turn your life around, literally. And that's how you stop this overstimulation from ruining your life. So I hope you recognize the importance of this video. I mean, modern technology is dangerous. It really is. Like I feel for the young kids nowadays who get iPads or tablets thrown in their face at eight years old. We don't even know the effects of, of this shit on our brain yet. Well, maybe we do, but it can't be good. Like the long-term effects, like it can't be good. We're literally a TikTok generation who can't focus for longer than half a second, but we need to be the ones who reverse those effects. We need to be the ones that stand out from the crowd and start to normalize the dopamine detox lifestyle start to normalize the fact that we can sit in a room for five minutes without checking our phone 
or we could leave our phone at home while we go out for a walk. We're not just so addicted to our phone and stimulating content that we just need it all the time. I've made great progress towards it and I know you can too. So like I said, I hope you understand the importance of this video. And if, if you're still watching, you definitely understand the importance of just stepping away from modern technology. And I appreciate you for watching this far as always. I hope I was able to get the shitty attention span guys to, to stay on this video for a while, but who knows? If not, I'll keep trying. Um, maybe I'll have to one day resort to fucking overstimulation in my videos to, to transfer those guys onto my message of dopamine detoxing, self-improvement, improving your life, improving your mental health, improving your physical health, improving everything. Otherwise they're screwed and they'll just live a normal life, <clears throat> excuse me, for the rest of their life. But that's not our problem. I'm still ranting for no reason, so I'm gonna end this video. Like it if you want, comment if you want, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.